Hello and welcome to TurboSign's guide to TurboDrive, our speaker network control software. This series aims to get you up and running with the software companion to our range of LMSD series products. The combination of software and hardware together offers an elegant implementation of total control over a complex setup. To operate the TurboDrive system, we first need to connect all of your devices. If only one LMS device is being used, then the connection to a PC can be made using RS-232 cabling or via a USB adapter. Often, however, multiple devices need to be connected. In this case, a Linear Research BV Netbox should be used. These use the RS-485 standard over a CAT5 cable to link together networks of up to 100 devices. TurboSan recommends the use of the Linear Research BVNet USB adapter to ensure an easy setup. This method also affords you support from TurboSan should you need it. Before we hook all this up, however, we need to install TurboDrive on your PC correctly. To download the TurboDrive software, simply go to TurboSan's homepage at www.turbosound.com Then click on the Support tab on the top menu bar. On the drop-down menu, select Downloads. Once the Downloads page is loaded, Click on the TurboDrive section and download the TurboDrive zip file. You should also download the BVNet drivers for your PC. These will allow correct interaction between your computer and the BVNet device. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for updates at turbosound.com. Hello again, and welcome to part two of our TurboDrive software guide. We're now going to look at installing the software on your PC. Firstly, locate the downloaded TurboDrive zip file, and then extract the contents. Then start the setup file. This will take you to the setup wizard for TurboDrive. Click next, and then select the installation folder and user options. Read the software agreement and click Agree to continue with the installation. The software will then install itself. You will also need to install the BVNet drivers for use with TurboDrive. You should proceed to unzip your downloaded file or open your CD and then extract the contents. Here you will find the setup for the drivers. Simply open the setup and click Next to begin the installation. Then click Finish once the operation is complete. If you haven't connected your BVNet box to the PC yet, now is the time to do it. Simply attach a USB cable to your PC and then to the relevant port of your network box. Then, attach the CAT5 cable to the box and run it to the first LMS unit of your chain. Now we can begin to use TurboDrive.
Hello again, and welcome to part three of our turbo drive guide. Firstly, we're going to look at assigning COM ports. Turbo drive should automatically do this on startup. However, in some cases, you will need to assign them manually. To do this, go to the top menu bar, select network, and then COM port. From here, select the BVNet port before clicking Done. Now we can link up to our network devices by going online. Simply click on the Go Online button. Hello again, and welcome to the fourth part of TurboSound's guide to TurboDrive. This section will look at TurboDrive's factory presets. To begin, we first need to download the presets. To do this, go to TurboSound's homepage at www.turbosound.com. Click Products on the top menu bar, followed by Electronics in the Live Sound section. You then need to locate the section for the LMS device that you're using, either a D24 or a D26. Once on the correct page, look to the left panel and click on Support Docs, and then click the Factory Preset Files to download them. To load your files into TurboDrive, click File and then Load Factory Settings. You'll then need to locate the preset files and load the appropriate one. These will now be available for you to use with your devices. In a system containing multiple devices, it is useful to be able to determine which one is which. By selecting the desired device and clicking on the location icon on the top bar, the LMS selected will display a short message on its screen to identify itself. Double click on the device to begin controlling it. This will open up a small Monicon overview. This can then be expanded to show the full array of customizable aspects. To choose a preset, click on the drop down menu under Recall and select the appropriate preset. The default settings for the preset will then be loaded. You can use the text box in the bottom left corner of the panel to rename your device. This name is then associated with the device for all remaining operations.
Hello again, and welcome to the fifth part of our Turbo Drive Guide. The crossover section allows you to control the frequency response of any connected device. Every output is available to customize to your preference. They are color coded to correspond with the key on the graph above. Crossover points can be set using the text boxes and filter shapes can be set using the drop down menus. Alternatively, you can adjust the settings by using curve dragging on the graph. To activate curve dragging, click on the black display area. A selection of tabs will then appear. These can be positioned to control the crossover points. Dragging horizontally will control the frequency, whilst holding shift and dragging vertically will cycle through the available slopes and filter types. Input and output channels have an 8-band EQ section. Likewise, here you can adjust the EQ using either the text boxes or by curve dragging. Dragging horizontally controls the frequency, whilst dragging vertically controls the gain. Holding shift and dragging vertically will control the bandwidth, or in the case of a shelving filter, the slope. LMSD series controllers are currently loaded with 45 presets. The first two of these are reserved as basic mono and stereo presets, while presets 3 to 30 are factory specific. The remaining 15 slots are available for you to save as your own settings. To store a preset, press store, choose the memory location and give it a name. The current settings will then be written to the chosen memory location. When storing presets, do not use presets 1 and 2, as these are the base mono and stereo setups and they cannot be overwritten. To delete a preset, click the Arrange button. Select the desired preset, then click Delete. The current set of EQ information can be saved as a device settings file on your PC. To do this, click the desired device in the left-hand panel, then click on Save to store your settings to a chosen location. TurboDrive will ask you if you wish to save all of the used settings into the file. Selecting Yes will transfer all of the possible settings of a device, whereas selecting No will only save the current settings applied to that device. Note that this will not save created presets, only crossover and EQ adjustments. Created presets must be saved separately. To recall the factory settings to a device, select it and then click File Open before selecting the desired file. This will then overwrite the current settings. If you wish to retain the current settings, save them in a separate file beforehand. If you open a settings file containing presets, all current presets will be overwritten. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe at turbosound.com. Hello and welcome to the sixth part of our guide to TurboDrive. We're now going to look at the grouping function. This allows you to merge multiple devices together to be controlled by a single panel. To create a group, select a device and drag it onto the group's header. To add further devices to the created group, Simply select them and then drag into the group. You can also hold shift and click to select multiple devices. To create further groups, drag a device onto the group's header once again. To rename a group, right click the group and type in the new name.
you can control an entire group by double-clicking on it. When controlling a large variety of devices, only the common parameters between all of them will be able to be controlled. However, when controlling a number of similar devices, such as a Flexaray group, you have much more scope for control as they all share the same setup. If you wish, you can copy an EQ from one part of the system to another. Simply right-click in the graph and select Copy EQ. Then, go to the location you wish to paste to, right-click in the graph and select Paste EQ. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe at turbosound.com. Hello again, and welcome to the final part of our Turbo Drive Guide. To finish, we're going to look at the Rack DP50 amplifier and its interaction with Turbo Drive. If loaded with the TFM560 preset, the LF section will be bridged. If you then click on Properties, you can choose to override the amplifier's front panel User DSP Default button to prevent user EQ being accidentally overwritten. A power save mode is also provided because the Rack DP50 draws significant current even when no signal is present. To do this, click on the tab below power and switch from on to save. You can set the save time from between three minutes to two hours. As soon as audio is present, the amplifier will switch back on. TurboDrive logs up to 72 hours worth of data about the performance of the amplifier. This includes information about thermal, current and protection action. To view the data in Excel, right-click on the graph and select to copy the data to clipboard. Then, paste it into a new Excel spreadsheet. Thanks for watching our video tutorials and don't forget to subscribe at turbosound.com.